This is the Lexar NM1090 Pro, and this is as close to an unbiased review as I can do. I kind of hate the whole clickbait attention grabbing stuff that seems to be a requirement to make reviews these days, so instead I want to do something different. Be honest, show you the thing, test it, and give you my thoughts. If that sounds good to you, let's get into it. Oh, and disclosure, Lexar, or Lexar's Chinese PR company anyway, provided me with this drive to test. Although they don't have any say in the video, my thoughts, or anything. These are my thoughts and my test results. Right, let's get to the drive. This is the pro version of the NM1090, which means that it doesn't come with a heatsink, but is somehow 2 gigabytes per second faster. They claim 14 gigabytes per second on reads and 13 gigabytes per second on writes, less than a gig slower than the Crucial T710 that I checked out recently. Although that is only for the 2 and my 4 terabyte version here, the 1 terabyte only hits 10 gigabytes per second on writes, at least apparently. This is a regular 2280 form factor, although at least this 4 terabyte version is dual sided. It's only partially dual sided with two NAND flash packages on the back towards the screw end, but for, for some boards and laptops that might be an issue, so do keep it in mind. As I said, this comes in one, two or four terabyte capacities, and I'm happy to report that this does actually have a DRAM cache, with both the one and two terabyte drives getting two gigabytes, while this four terabyte gets four gig. Where the story gets interesting is that while the DRAM and NAND flash are both made by Longsys, a Chinese manufacturer, the controller is a Silicon Motion SM2508G, the same one Crucial uses on the T710. It's a fast quad-core ARM chip that is a true Gen 5x4 controller, so performance between these sh uh, those two should be somewhat similar, although the differences in the NAND flash especially will play a role. Obviously with four NAND packages on this 4TB drive, each package offers 1TB of capacity, while Micron's packages can offer up to 2TB per package. Anyway, that's a look around the thing, now let's get it in a system and test it out. Let's start with the synthetic tests and Crystal Disk Mark specifically. The top end best case result is this one, the sequential read and write with a Q depth of 8 and 1 thread. This one sees the NM1090 a hair ahead in reads, like 30 megabytes per second on 14,000 megabytes per second, although that is 173 megabytes per second faster than claimed, so that's great. Writes are less impressive though, at 12.5 gig per second. That's still <laughs> amazingly fast, of course, but it isn't the 13 gig per second that Lexar claims, nor is it the 13.3 gig that the Crucial T710 can offer. Still, it's crazy fast. Swapping to the same test but the Q depth of 1, we see a very stark difference to the T710. The NM1090 offers nearly 9 gigabytes per second on writes, down from over 10 gig on the T710, but only 6 gig per second on reads. That's like good Gen 4x4 SSD territory. Yikes! The tougher set of tests are the random 4 kilobyte block ones, like this with a Q depth of 32, which don't really look good for the NM1090. It's midfield, behind the NM800 and Lexar Thor Pro, at least on writes. Although it is ahead of the T710 in both reads and writes, so there's something. Happily with a Q depth of 1, the NM1090 Pro shines, at least on writes, coming in right at the top with a decent little lead over the T710. The reads aren't much to write home about though. AS SSD generally offers the same sort of standings, but lower results. As a perfect example, ASSSC's best case test, the sequential read and writes, has the NM1090 at 10 gig for reads and only 9.6 gig on writes, a fair bit less than Crystal Disk Mark. It's around 500 megabytes per second slower than the T710, but still in a league of their own compared to all of the other drives. As for the random 4K blocks, the NM1090 is still at the top and actually doing pretty good on reads too. It's slower than the T710 on reads, but a decent, if small, advantage in writes. The same test again, but with 64 threads, 
doesn't play out as well for the NM1090. Matching the T710 in writes, but being decidedly midfield in actually both reads and writes overall. It's in the higher echelons for reads for sure, but not exactly at the top. Finally, for the synthetic tests, a TTO disc benchmark. This is a bit busy, I know, but the two yellow lines are what we're looking for here. This is the performance across varying block sizes from 512 bytes to 64 megabytes, with the Q depth of 4. The write performance looks to be about on par with the T710, up until the 128 kilobyte block size anyway, where it then diverges, offering generally lower performance overall. But we've seen that already, it's a bit slower on writes at the top end, that's fine. What's unusual is the read performance, where it follows the usual curve up to 64 kilobytes, then it flatlines and then picks back up at the 2 megabyte block size, matching the T710's performance. I don't know what's going on here, whether this is a controller firmware issue or NAND limitation, but it isn't amazing. As for file transfers, to be honest, you're going to struggle to saturate these things. PCI Gen 5, especially four lanes of it, is just so fast that even stuff like a RAM disk is going to struggle to stress this. My usual file duplication stress test though does, and the NM1090 does pretty well, although it isn't the best that I've seen. It starts duplicating at 3 gigabytes per second versus 3.3 gigabytes per second in the T710, although the party piece here is that this thing barely drops any performance despite basically filling the drive. After, while well, basically filling the drive, over 3 terabytes of writing, it does drop to around 1.15 gigabytes per second, but you have to write 3 terabytes of data all in one go to get that performance, so I'd call that a win. The drive does have 3 temperature sensors on board, and while the primary temperature sensor only hit around 60 degrees celsius, with a large motherboard heatsink I might add, the drive temperature 2 sensor did hit up to 81 degrees celsius, which is on the rather high side. The motherboard I'm using does actually have heatsinks on both sides too for the drive, so I don't know if this is a sort of like smothering issue, or this is just normal for a drive like this. Still, it didn't thermally throttle, but it definitely needs a heatsink. The true benefit this thing has over the T710 isn't speed. It doesn't even try and claim that crown. No, it's price. This 4TB drive is over £100 less than the 4TB T710, which need to remind you has the exact same controller and some very similar performance figures. Well, this thing isn't quite as fast. For all intents and purposes, it may as well be. And for such a steep discount? Damn. This appears to be a fantastic value, for those dead set on a Gen 5 drive anyway, and offers near top notch performance too. I personally don't get why you'd buy a Gen 5 drive right now, I mean you barely benefit from a Gen 4 drive right now, so I wouldn't buy this. But that's only because I'd buy a Gen 4 version instead for another £100 less. Like, you can buy two 4TB Gen 4 drives for the same price as one 4TB T710. Anyway, I am impressed with the NM1090 Pro, and if you are dead set on a Gen 5 drive, which I remind you, I don't recommend, check this one out. It'll be linked in the description if you want to check it out. Of course, those are my thoughts, but I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the NM1090 Pro? Is this a drive you're interested in? Or would you rather get a Gen 4 drive and save, well, another £100 on top of this? Let me know in the comments down below. If you want to see more videos like this one, you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. Check out plenty of other videos on the end cards, including the T710 review. And uh, yeah, otherwise, if you want to check this out, like I said, link in the description. You can also check out my own hardware, the open source uh, response time and latency testing tools. Those are available at osrtt.com, linked in the description as well. And yeah, otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you all in the next video.